All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming and for uh, being part of this Oasis event. It's really quite exciting to be here with all of you and today talking about a topic that's actually close to my heart but it's something quite challenging because I'm not really a very good listener actually. So I had to really learn this skill, you know, getting married uh, 15 years ago now uh, and I'm still learning this skill. It's still something that is actually uh, in progress, uh, you know, time and time again. Uh, I, I wanted to share something with you, which I thought was really interesting that I found uh, off the internet. And it says here, you know, listening to wife is like reading the terms and conditions of a website. You understand nothing. Still, you say, I agree. So <laughs> it's, I thought it was like, okay, you can replace wife with husband, whatever. <laughs> but, you know, I thought it was quite funny. And, and when you think about it, it's actually such a universal uh, topic. And I don't think any marriage over here uh, or any marriage that I've, I, I ever know has, like nobody has, um, how you say, w w would say that they have never struggled with this issue before about learning how to listen. So we've all uh, had to learn this, right? So one of my, uh, st the story of me, like when, when you know, getting married and uh, with my husband, he's the kind of person, right? He obviously spends a lot of time on his computer as with a lot of uh, people nowadays do. And when he's doing his work and he's, he's typing or replying an email or something like that, and he's preoccupied. And sometimes as I'm talking and sharing things, I realize that, you know, he doesn't actually respond immediately. And he doesn't even acknowledge it by nodding his head or saying, mm-hmm, you know. And so I, I, I wait for a little while and I have this like a little moment where I feel that, Maybe he didn't hear me or he didn't, he didn't hear what I said. So I repeat my question again or whatever I was saying. And then I still don't really get a response. And I'm like, what's wrong? What's up? You know, like, did you not hear me? I was, I, I was just asking and I, and I just realized as I went through, it was, it's actually a theme that happened in our, in, in our marriage, right? It's not that he was not really listening. It's just that he takes time to process and respond. And so I had to like say, you know what, uh, it would be great if you could actually just acknowledge a little bit by just nodding or something like that. At least I know that you're there, you heard me. Because if you didn't respond in any way, then I would have thought that uh, I need to repeat myself. And when I do repeat myself, he gets irritated because it's like I'm pushing him for an answer. So, so that's um, basically my story, right? So it's um, work in progress. So I want to ask all of you, okay, can you estimate how long an average person listens before they respond with a statement? Give a guess. What do you think? Not sure whether I can see any of the, you can unmute and, and, and men, uh, say, or you can put it in the chat. Let's guess how, how, how long. Three seconds. Sarah says seven seconds. Louisa says three seconds. Five seconds, uh, Ariel, Monica says three, two, Indrani. Wow, two seconds. Cheyenne says five seconds. Right, five seconds. Wow. Yeah, actually, interestingly, the, the stats is that usually it's about 11 to 17 seconds. Okay, so, <laughs> so all of us are maybe a, a little bit more faster to respond <laughs> than the average. But that's such a short period of time, right? Someone says something, few seconds later, you're already responding, right? And so it's no wonder we have problems, right? No wonder uh, we have problems listening because it is not second nature to us, okay? So if only we truly understood and learned how to listen to each other before we actually share what we think, share what we, it's in our hearts, um, you know, we can, we can just uh, learn how to communicate a lot better. And the problem with a lot of marriages is that we put our own filters and our own self-interest into the conversation, right? So for example, right, like when my husband and I are arguing, sometimes uh, I'll get in, upset in, in a situation because I would think like, hey, why is it that you always have to be the right one? You know, uh, like, why is it that you have to... Uh, say your agenda and, and I'm the one who has to be wrong. And so I play this victim mentality and this is a lot of uh, in my early years as well, like just like, oh, I'm always wrong, you know, you're always right. And so I, I, I need to be heard. And so I had this, this whole 
feeling like I'm not being heard. So then I put myself in this space of oh, being victimized. But actually, that is not the situation. He, he's just trying to communicate something. And I was putting all these filters and, and that actually uh, destroyed the communication that we had, right? So, so sometimes we are only thinking about ourselves and not really about the other person. But listening puts the perspective of the other person in place, okay? So what does it really mean to actually listen to one another? You know, a lot of times we become very, very quick to judge, to like, to hate something, you know, on Facebook, just like, 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 quickly switch, you know? We're very, very quick to judge, right? We're quick to respond, we're quick to react, to give our own opinion. But can we learn to actually shift the focus from ourselves to the other person? And this could also be in the form of our kids, like, right? If uh, some of you who have kids, so we, we have to learn how to listen to them as well. So, you know, how many of you actually have friends, right? Um, when you have a problem to share, you, you talk to them, you share a problem, and then they interrupt you, and then they top up your problem with an even bigger problem, bigger problem of theirs. How many of you actually have friends like that? <laughs> or you've experienced that before, and you can also message in the chat, chat group or something like that, or just raise your hands. Yeah, like, yeah, there's always one Sarah says, yeah, so Lovina, so raise your hands, Indrani says yes, right? It's irritating, right? It's irritating when and somebody is, uh, brings the focus back to them. You're trying to say something and communicate something and then somebody else hijacked your conversation and now it's about them. So it's, it's, it can be very annoying. And so the whole conversation actually just shifted from you to the other person. And now you're forced to listen to her big problem. Okay, so this is where um, really we need to understand what is listening. And so I'm going to explain what active listening is not. Okay, because it's not just merely hearing the content of what's being said, like, oh, I had a bad day today. That's the content, right? It's not just merely hearing that content. Um, it is not also about being, it is about not about being distracted is not about being close-minded uh, and about making judgments. So this is not what active listening is all about, okay? So what is active listening and how can we actively listen? So it's very interesting to see that actually communication is more than just what you say. So the words used, if you look at this graph, it's actually only 7%. So when you tell somebody, uh, I had a great day today. You can say it, it's a very generic phrase, I can had a great day today. You can say it where if you put in the tone of voice, I had a great day today. Do you really think I had a great day? Or I had a great day today. Like suddenly it communicates so much than what is just the exact same phrase I just said and how I said it. And then the body language, right? If you like, someone's just like, I had a great day today. Yeah, I did. I had a great day. You know, it's just totally not convincing. So, so really our communication is actually made up of a few different parts. And so we really need to pay attention to someone. And when we communicate with our spouse particu in particular, we are not just listening to what is being said, look, listening to the tone, look at the body language. You know, you can also um, mirror the body language. So if somebody is talking to you and you're sitting there with your arms crossed and, and just like looking very disinterested, your friend or your spouse might think, you're not really listening to me. But if you're like leaning forward, uh, you're looking them in the eye, you give them eye contact, you know, then they feel that, wow, like I'm important. You're listening to what I have to say, right? So I think if we, we want to be treated that, that too, I'm, I'm sure a lot of us, uh, we want to have that kind of quality conversation where somebody's really paying attention to us, putting their whole body uh, and, and, you know, just really paying attention to, to what we have to say. So, so this is what's important. Now we can smile, we can nod, and that's all part of that uh, body language and the communication. So... This is a really important aspect of active listening. The other area of active listening is about being present. So what does it really mean to be present? Okay, um, 
I think very normal, as I said, my one of my superpowers is multitasking. <laughs> There's sometimes we multitask in many ways, right? I'm looking at my phone and, and surfing through something. At the same time, I am listening to my husband talking about his day. Actually, I'm not really paying that much attention because it's very difficult for me to uh, focus on two things at the same time, especially when it comes to listening. Uh, currently, I have this situation, you know, working from home during MCO, my kids, right, will always come up to me during my Zoom calls and they try to talk to me. And I'm trying to listen to the person on the Zoom call and then here they are trying to tell me something and I cannot concentrate. So I have to tell my kids like, hey, you know, when mommy is on a Zoom call, right, like I cannot listen to two people at the same time. So can you please... Uh, write down a note or something like that and tell me what you need to tell what tell me through a note so then they will come back to me with a whiteboard and then they'll say things like mommy can i play a game right now whatever so at least i can focus on on one person at a time so a lot of times that when we have a distraction you know like a baby with us our phone the television whatever it's really hard to have quality conversation so um you know, we, we really need to be able to create an atmosphere for this. Like, how do we make space to be present with one another? I Veron is not here today, but um, she was supposed to be here. But, you know, she has this really amazing thing with her husband where they actually have a couch where they, uh, I think, after hours, whatever, they will sit there. I, I think it's in their bedroom, if I don't mistake. Bedroom, Aliza, you know, right? So, so yeah, then they will sit down and have a, a drink um, and have really, you know, put aside every uh, distraction and just have that kind of conversation with one another. And I thought that's really nice. And sometimes after I put the kids to bed, I will ask my husband, so like, hey, let's, uh, let's chat a little bit. But I know that if we are doing it on the bed, maybe I'll fall asleep. So then we say, okay, let's go downstairs and have tea <laughs> or or coffee or whatever or dessert and then we'll sit down and after five minutes if we're not talking then we're like okay wait, wait, wait. Well, anyway we came here for a conversation <laughs> we're sitting down there we're looking at our phones again <laughs> so then we have to make that space and the environment to actually be present with one another yeah so some couples i know they, they go for walks together and they really enjoy that and they can have proper conversation that way uh to them it's not a distraction right yeah, and so we can also give uh, being present, like we can give verbal affirmations, like saying things like, you know, I see, uh, I understand, I hear you. Those are, those are words that you can actually use to help the conversation along, okay? And that shows that you're genuinely interested in the person. The next part, which is really challenging, I think this is the most challenging thing, is to suspend judgment. This part, because, you know, we all full of opinions, just how we talked about how many minutes we are able, or how, sorry, not even minutes, seconds, how many seconds before we interject with our own opinion, with our own judgment. Um, you imagine like situations, another situation when someone's telling you, let's say you come home, you talk to your husband about a, a really bad day at work or a, a challenging situation with your boss, and then after, as you're halfway telling your story, you still haven't finished telling your story, then your husband suddenly come back to you with a solution. Oh, this is how you must uh, solve the problem. This is how you need to, to take charge of this situation. But you're like, I haven't finished telling my story yet and you're already giving me a solution, right? So this is not the way that um, we should be listening. We should be listening to hear the story fully and then only like at the end, um, you can probably share your opinion at a later stage, but hear the story fully, right? And so this is um, when, when, when someone is sharing something, we really need to learn how to stop immediately fixing problems um, and giving solutions all too quickly before you hear everything in its entirety. And um, <clears throat> the, under you, the, the part about suspending judgment is that, you know, for example, in a fight, especially because... In a fight, it's always like my opinion versus your opinion, right? And and a lot of times, it's about what we think. The focus comes back to us and what what exactly how we feel, not not necessarily about what the other person feels. And it's a reflection of our agenda. Yeah. Okay, can you can hear someone. Can you just get uh, everyone to mute? Don't mind. Yeah. 
Okay, so it is a reflection. If if we are always pushing our agenda, it is actually just a reflection of our own closed mind. We're not able to have that kind of open conversation. And so we really need to think about the way we've been communicating with our partners, with our kids as well. Are we quick to jump in without uh, to offer solutions? Are we very quick to, to actually uh, to just suddenly like uh, tell you something or, or tell a disapproving, give a disapproving look or, or whatever, uh, even before you hear totally what the other person is trying to say. Okay. And the other thing is that we should not try to finish the sentences of the other person because then in a, in a sense, you are actually trying to guess and second guess what, what this person also needs to be communicating with you. Okay, so we need to have an open mind. All good so far? Everyone good so far? Yeah? Okay, so the fourth point and the fourth tip is really about asking clarifying questions. Um, clarifying questions help you to understand the story better. Uh, especially some of you might be married to people or husbands uh, who are not very talkative. <laughs> you can actually ask open-ended questions, right? Don't ask questions that only require a yes or no answer. If it's like, uh, well, did you have a good day? Yes, no. That's a very open, uh, close, sorry, that's a very close-ended question. But if you ask, tell me about your day, that's a more open-ended way of asking a question. And then you can to clarify you know can you tell me more about this um how did it how did you feel when that happened to you you know could you elaborate so by asking this kind of clarifying questions it gives the person opportunity to really share and even like process maybe emotions and, and feelings and i, I mean <clears throat> if you think back about the time when somebody did give you the space to talk through about your emotions and your feelings, you know, how did that feel, right? You feel heard, right? Heard, not hurt, <laughs> but heard. You, you feel heard. And this is really a good example to also share how coaching actually works because, you know, a coach actually listens and actively listens and, and does, a, a, does reflect back to you all the things that were actually in your heart. And a lot of times, right, when we talk and share about a problem, for example, we don't really want people to give us solutions, right? Most of the time, we actually have the solutions within ourselves. We know what we're supposed to do. It's just an avenue for us to share and communicate uh, maybe our process, our emotions, process our thoughts at that point in time. So if you give somebody that space uh, to talk and to just to, to share and, and you're really paying attention to what this person's saying, it actually creates a better uh, environment and you become a much better listener, okay? The next and last point here is about summarizing. So what is summarizing? Summarizing, it's like paraphrasing. So <clears throat> if somebody tells you something about their day and you're not too sure, how uh, or you think this is what they said, you can paraphrase it back to them by using a different word that's rephrasing in a different way. Uh, so, <clears throat> so for example, you, you can say that, oh, I, I got really angry at my, you know, today because the kids were not behaving and I, I was really upset about something that my son did, you know, then you can paraphrase in a way it's like, oh, you, you had a, a bad day and, and you know, your, your, the kids were really on your toes or you know, irritating you today. So that's a way of like summarizing and paraphrasing back to them. You basically say back what is being said to you, but in a slightly different form. Okay, so this helps because actually you are trying to follow the train of thought of the person. And um, what it means is that you are trying to, to your best understanding, reflect back and confirming what the person has communicated to you is really what they intend to say, right? So that's the whole point about summarizing. Okay, so in such a short period of time, uh, I just want to ask all of you, which of these five things do you find challenging to do? as a listener. 
which one that's challenging for you? Oh, Sarah says suspending judgment, judgment. Indrani, yeah, Louisa says suspending judgment. Wow. Especially when you're in conflict, right? When you're arguing with somebody, right? So hard to suspend judgment, you know, to listen to the person because you already got your own opinion. <laughs> yeah. Anna says being fully present. Ariel says tone and body language. That's great. That's great. Okay. So I am going to give us all opportunity to practice <laughs> because um, it doesn't, you know, being a good listener is not something that happens immediately and easily. So we really do need to practice. Okay. So I actually going to break everybody up into groups. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice listening to one another. 